In a previous video, we've talked about the comparison of domestic and foreign bonds as an investment opportunity in a general sense. I want to talk about a specific example and really walk through the various steps that it would take to, to actually compare the returns across countries, taking into account exchange rates. And we're going to do this first with no hedging, no use of forward or futures market. And so let's start out with this, uh, these two interest rates, the U.S. interest rates on interest rate on bonds, on government bonds with essentially no risk of uh, default, paying 10%. And recall that this is paid in dollars. If someone buys a U.S. Treasury from the, the U.S. government, the Treasury promises to pay the holder of that bond interest in dollars. The UK interest rate, 5% issued, this is issued by the UK central bank or, or government, that's paid in pounds. So at a very superficial level, it looks like the US bond is the better deal, pays 10% as opposed to 5%. But the fact that these are paid in different currencies will potentially, and in fact, in this case will, change the relative attractiveness of the two of the two assets. Now I have a couple of exchange rates here that I'm that I've pulled out of the air. We have the current price of pounds or dollars, depending on how you look at it. Uh, the current spot rate is it takes one dollar to buy a pound. So that's the how much an American coming to the foreign exchange market, how many dollars it would take to buy a pound, and for simplicity, we're just doing it one for one. And then we have the expected spot rate in the future. Now the expectations about the, about the future path of the exchange rate is ultimately an individual decision. It's what an individual person would uh, think the exchange rate will be. But let's, uh, let's think of this uh, as a, uh, the, what one person might think, and then compare these two uh, returns. And so uh, let's take a, a look at this from the standpoint of a U.S. investor who might have $100 and then is comparing the, uh, the U.S. versus the U.K. Uh, investment. Now, if the investor... Uh, uh, buys the U.S. bond, they're going to, and let's say it's a simple interest rate over a, the course of a year, they'll end up with $110 if they invest in the U.S. at 10%. So that's the $100 multiplied times 1 plus the U.S. interest rate. They're going to get their principal back, the $100, plus $100 times the, uh, the U.S. Uh, interest rate. So this is the, the, the an American uh, return on the U.S. investment. Now, if they are investing in the British asset, it's more complicated. They need to first take their $100 and convert it into pounds using today's exchange rate. So they're gonna take the $100 and use this exchange rate to um, get how many pounds that they will have available to invest in the British asset. So we need to convert that using pound over dollars. And what they'll end up with is 100 pounds that they can now use to invest in the British uh, asset. So first step, convert the exchange rate, or convert using the exchange rate. Step two, they're gonna take this 100 pounds and invest in the UK asset get 5%, so 5% of the uh, 
of the U uh, on, on the UK asset is going to give them 100 and five pounds at the end of the year. The third step is to think about what they expect the exchange rate to be in the future and how many uh, dollars they expect to, uh, to get. Well, they're going to take the 105 pounds, use the exchange rate that they expect to see, the $2 per pound, and what they're going to receive is $210 at the end, they expect to return to have at the end of the, uh, at the end of the year. So if you look at these two alternatives, investing in the UK or investing in the United States, the British investment for the American is far more attractive. They can turn their $100 into $210 in the uh, using the, the British uh, bond, using these, these exchange rates, as opposed to 110 if they invest in the U.S. So despite the fact that the U.S. interest rate is higher, okay, the nominal interest rate is 10%, the British interest rate is only 5%, the British investment is much more attractive. Now let's step back and, and think about why that is. These two exchange rates, the, the current spot rate of $1 per pound and the expected uh, spot rate in the future of $2 per pound represents a massive pound appreciation. Currently, it only takes a uh, one, uh, a pound buys $1. In the future, we expect the pound to buy $2. So even though the interest rate is lower in the UK, and there may be relatively small numbers of pounds that the American investor gets, each pound is going to be worth a lot more dollars because of the expected fall in the value of the dollar. Okay, so the, the expected depreciation of the dollar, the expected appreciation of the pound will, will overwhelm this interest rate differential. Now, there's a, a simple form, a formula for this comparison, uh, both a, a one that's exact and then one that's used often as a, uh, a shorthand that is based on these three steps. So I want to compare these uh, investments. Okay, one is the U.S. investment Okay, that was what we started uh, with here and now I want to compare that with in uh, the US, U.S. investor investing in Britain. Okay, we will take our $100 and I'm converting it using this exchange rate. Now we define the exchange rate as dollars per pound, the number of domestic currency units to buy the foreign um, uh, currency. So it's dollars per pound. We use pounds per dollar, so it's one over it's the reciprocal of the current exchange rate. We then use the UK interest rate. So this is the second step. So this is step one. You take the result of this, multiply it times that to get step two. 
And then we look at the expected exchange rate. Okay. In this case, we had that the left-hand side was greater than the right-hand side. If that's the case, then invest in Britain. The Americans should invest in Britain. Now, if you take this from the standpoint of the British, they'll also want to invest in the UK. If it were the opposite, then you would have the American asset as being more attractive uh, than the British asset. The Brits would invest in the US. The US would invest in the US. Okay. Now, the shorthand uh, version of this, let me get, get rid of this and write it again. Okay, again, 1 over E times 1 plus UK interest rate times the expected exchange rate is compared to 1 plus the US interest rate. Okay, so this is the uh, return from an American investing abroad. And this was the return for a domestic investment. We can rewrite this using some algebra, which I'm not going to uh, go into. as uh, the following. If you take a look at the UK investment, it can basically be written as the UK investment plus the expected appreciation or depreciation of the British pound, and you compare this to the simple US uh, interest rate. Uh, if this is greater than that, then the UK investment is more attractive. Now let's look at this from the standpoint of the um, of this example. So what we have here is that the UK interest rate is 5%. We've got the US interest rate as 10%. So from this simple standpoint, the, uh, the U.S. seems to be the better, uh, better investment. But what you have here is, if you look at this, this part of the, um, of the equation, what we have here is that the expected interest rate minus the spot, divided by the spot, so 2 minus 1 is 1, divided by 1 is 100%. That big depreciation of the dollar, the big appreciation of the pound, is going to increase the attractiveness of the foreign asset. And so when you compare these returns across the countries, you take into account not only the interest rate, but the expected appreciation and depreciation of the currency. Now, Finally, uh, oh, I should say, uh, this is the exact formula. This is a, 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 an approximation. There, so there's one term that's, that's not uh, included in this approximation. But this is a lot of times what you'll see people uh, uh, do. But where this comes from is those steps that we talked about earlier in this video. 
So what you use really depends on uh, whether you want to get the exact or get what is a, a very intuitive uh, version and also easy to uh, calculate. Now, let me emphasize again that this involves no hedging. Okay, the expectation here in this example is that there's a, an expected large dollar depreciation or expected large pound appreciation. Your expectations may not be right. You may invest in the uh, British uh, asset expecting to get this great return because of the changes in the exchange rate. You could be completely wrong. Uh, this speculation uh, here may turn out to be a, um, a, very, a very misguided uh, guess. We can talk about this same type of process with hedging, which we'll do in a, uh, in a subsequent video.